Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do an interesting physics-related problem, which I think can be called the chasing problem, because this problem is all about chasing. The problem states that if you have a regular n-gon, well this is just a regular 5-gon, a pentagon, but we can generalize to regular n-gons with uh, vertices a, b, c, d, e in this case, such that at the start, a chases b with velocity v, b chases c with the velocity v, c chases d, d chases e, e chases a, all with velocity v, and then they continue doing so, chasing directly towards each other. Then first, the first part of the question is where do they all end up at the very end, and the second part of the question is how far did each of these points travel? So let's first address the first question. Where do they end up? Well, I hope that this part of the problem isn't too hard for you because by, sy by symmetry, it's obvious that they end up in the center, right? Because if they don't end up in the center, if they end up, say, right here, then we can just rotate the entire thing by however many degrees to make a exactly symmetrical shape, but with a different uh, part where they end up. And then since they can't end up in both of these parts simultaneously, that's absurd. So the only possible case is where they all end up right at the center. Which now brings us to the more interesting question, how far do each of these uh, dots go? So this problem seems much less obvious because if we try to draw how exactly each of these points move, it might look something like this. So at first, it goes straight towards B, but then note that B also goes down a little bit. So it might, A might keep on going down like this. And then B continues going down towards C, but C goes to the left. So B also goes to the left a little bit. So A behaves similarly, and then this keeps on going. And then we found out that in the end, the path might look something like a spiral. And, uh, how might we find the distance of this spiral is the question. And this doesn't seem very obvious because how do we even find the distance of the spiral? How do we even find maybe an equation for the spiral? And even if we had an equation, how do we find the distance anyways? So there must be an easier way to do this problem. And indeed there is. Let's think about it in a more physics sense. Consider how A moves relative to the, all the points at any point in time. All right, so let's say at, let's say it starts at time t equals zero. So at any t, what happens? Well, since it's all symmetric, the diagram at any t will probably look quite similar. So let's say this is a at t equals, I don't know, t zero or t prime, doesn't really matter. Anyways, if a is right here, then that means b would probably be around here. c would be around here, d would be around here, and e would be around here. And so it ends up looking like a regular pentagon again because it's all symmetrical. So at any time t, the vertices of a, b, c, and d, and e should still form a regular pentagon. And uh, in this case, how do the vectors, the velocity vectors look like? Well, they still look like they're going directly towards the next point. So in fact, this diagram, this big diagram on the outside is a perfect description of what actually happens at any point in time. So let's just, we can just look at the big diagram now. We don't need to look at any smaller diagrams. In this case, let me draw the diagram for the vertex at A. So this is A, this is B. We have the velocity vector going this way and with velocity V. So how might we figure out the distance that A travels? 
Well, in order to find out the distance, we can use the formula distance equals velocity times time. And well, we know velocity, it's just V. So we just need to find time in order to find distance. And thankfully, finding time might be easier than finding distance because distance is some really weird spiral. But time, time doesn't, might not have anything to do with some weird spiral shapes. Time might be easier to find. So let's try to find some way to find time. Well, when time equals zero, it's at the start. And when time equals the finishing time, then it should be at the center. So what we want to do is we want to find how much time it takes to have one of these points A end up at the center. How much time does this take? And how might we find that? Well, the trick here is to consider V in its components, in the tangential and uh, centripetal components. What I'm saying is we can divide V into the component tangential to the motion of A and the component centripetal to the motion of A, i.e. the component that's going towards the center, which looks like this. Let's call this VT and let's call this VC. So what does this good what does this do for us well if we think about it how does the tangential velocity contribute to moving towards the center well the center right here is always 90 degrees to the tangential velocity so in fact the tangential velocity does not contribute at all to moving a towards the center all it does is contribute to spinning a around meanwhile we have the centripetal velocity component of V, how does this uh, help us? Well, since the centripetal velocity is parallel to the direction that A needs to go to go to the center, it contributes 100% to how fast A goes towards the center. So in fact, once we uh, break it up into these components, we can just look at the centripetal velocity component of V in order to find out how much time it takes to get to the center. So let's just call the distance from A to the center R. Let's just call this R. How long does it take for A to get to the center? Well, we can use the distance equals velocity times time formula again. In this case, we have the distance at R equals the velocity is VC and the time is T. And what is this time? The time is just equal to radius over, or r, not radius. I guess you can think of it as radius. r over vc. So now we have the value of t. But what's vc? We first have to find vc as well. And in order to do that, well, this is just some simple trigonometry. Since we know that the sum of the exterior angles of any n-gon is 360, then that means that this angle here is 360 over n since it's just one of the n different exterior angles. So this is 360 over n and then if we continue this line over here we find that the angle that we want this angle right here is half of that. So this angle is in fact 180 over n 180 over n and so since this is 180 over n, we can just use sine to get that. We have that, let's see, we have that vc over v is equal to sine of 180 over n, which means that vc equals v times sine of 180 over n. So we have t is equal to r over v times sine of 180 over n and this is good because now we have t so what remains is to find d d is equal to v times t as we noticed before and we also have t is r over v times sine of 180 over n so after we plug that in we see that the two v's cancel out 
and we're left with v equal or d equals r over sine of 180 over n and we are done hey guys i'm here back with another math video today we're going to be doing uh an amc 12b problem from 2014 from 25 